All right. Uh, we have one more presentation. Uh, Ruben from uh, our uh, DevRel team, Senior Developer Advocate, going to present, uh, present on AWS, part one. So Ruben, you could take it away. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure that, um, all right. All right, hey everyone. So yeah, uh, my name is Ruben Reduce. I'm a senior uh, developer advocate for Great Expectations. And uh, today I'm gonna be talk, uh, talking to you and walking you through uh, part one of a, part, of a two part series. We hope that the second part will be done uh, by next month for the next month meeting. Uh, I'm gonna be talking to you through about how to validate and document your data in AWS S3. This is a very common use case. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, we're going to be using a new type of guides that we've put out there. Uh, they are very comprehensive and end-to-end. -end, and by end-to-end, -end, I meaning it goes from the very basics of setting your software underpinnings and all the dependencies all the way through the end, which is when you can actually validate your data and document that data. Uh, these paths have been uh, validated by us and or vetted by us. And uh, each of them specifying a specific use case. Um, we we're working on more additional ones, but for now we uh, we focused the first initial effort on AWS different the different services in AWS. Uh, you can see them uh, right now if you go to our doc site. It's going to be on the left uh, navigation bar. You're going to find integration guides, and underneath that you're going to find another menu called using your expectations with AWS. Here's where all these guides are all be. Uh, for this, I'm going to be using the using your expectations with uh, pandas is three. Uh, for the sake of brevity and time, I have to make some, we need to make some assumptions for this. Is. We're going to assume that you already gone through the first part of that guide, which is going to be setting up your Python versions, the correct Python versions, the uh, PIP, AWS CLIs, et cetera. Uh, we are also going to assume that you have access, re rewrite access to uh, at least one bucket in AWS where you're going to be storing or retrieving data from. And then obviously, uh, you're going to be needing a bucket where you have all of the data that you actually want to analyze. Um, the objectives of this uh, short demo that I'm doing today is basically I want to set you up so that way by the end of it, you'll be at a good stopping point for part two. Uh, and then we I hope to help, help you so that you can see how to set up a validation store, an expectation store, and then a data docs website. All right. Uh, for that, I need to move. Um, I would like to share. I'm going to have to share here two different things. Um, okay. Um, I need to share my command. Well, I'm going to share the whole desktop because otherwise it's just going to be confusing. All right. All right. So um, as you can see, so like I'm already in a command line. And then, well, before I jump into that, sorry, uh, I'm going to show you the guys that I'm going to be walking through you, uh, walk, will you walk, walk you through. Uh, and then as you can say, right, like we have here the prerequisites just to run this particular thing where we go through all the setup steps. And then we'll, we make sure that you have the correct versions, that you have the part of the Python virtual ends and all those, uh, you know, like to make sure that you have the correct credentials for AWS, et cetera. So before we even get started, we, we walk you through all those steps to make sure that you are correctly set up. All right. So the first thing is going to be creating a, what we call a data context in great expectations. This is sort of like the a project level view of, of all of our, uh, the things that we need uh, to run validations. And um, the first thing is just gonna be running that particular, that command that we're told on the screen. For instance, we do great expectations in it. And then we're gonna see an output similar to that, I guess we can tell. And we're gonna say, yes, of course, because we want to create it. All right, and then it's going to give you, it's going to create the structure within that uh, uh, that directory that you're in, as well as possibly follow uh, follow up steps. All right, all right. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to show uh, what we're going to do is uh, configure the expectation store for AWS. Uh, right now, we don't have any. Uh, for, this is a, a greenfield project. We don't have any expectations. So like, but this is going to eventually create a, a place where the expectations that you do create and then you add to suites, et cetera, are going to be stored in. Uh, normally they're stored locally uh, by default. And then, but here we're obviously trying to make sure how it works with AWS S3. 
And um, the, all of this, uh, all the, the files that we're going to be, the file that we're going to be messing with, I like to call my, the good old friend, great expectations, the YAML. This is the sort of truth for it, uh, for uh, great expectations. And then, um, you know, we're going to find the best way to do that is that we're going to find where we have this particular um, uh, type of the definition, like you can see right here. And then we are going to copy and paste what they tell us from there, right? Like what we have here, they tell us to copy and paste that. And then um, after you copy and paste that there and you add your bucket name and the prefix that you want to give, uh, remember the prefix, we're talking in AWS prefix, uh, it's just basically because the buckets in S3 do not actually support folders or directories. Uh, a way that you can that normally gets you can fake directories is by basically adding a prefix to those objects. So that way it gives the impression of being a directory, but it's not, but it's a very handy way of organizing related issues. So we're adding this particular uh, prefix to it. And then the second step before that is that we are going to come over here and add the uh, that that expectation that we just defined, we're gonna set it. This sets basically to active. This is like the active store. So you can have other. Uh, in this case, we have two: the expectation store and the expectations S3 store. You can have many of them, but then one of them is gonna be active, and you can select it. You can select it by here by doing so. Okay. All right. So uh, in addition to that, of course, we offer you the the, the help in case that you happen to have a non-traditional S3 endpoint or a non-traditional AWS region. You can pass them as the uh, Boto three Boto. By the way, is going to be is the official uh, Python SDK library, and then you can have. This is a bit of a pass through, so you can pass special uh, configurations to it that are not necessarily part of the standard thing. Uh, as I already mentioned, this is the way that you make it active. And then the way that we're going to check that that is actually working is that we're going to copy that command. Go back to the command line real quick, and uh, then run that one right. And then it will tell you that the one active is expectation is three store. Oh, and this, by the way, this is not only uh, this not only checks uh, this uh, this particular list uh, item that uses the AP3. Not only it checks that you actually have like you know the the YAML correctly that is correctly configured, but it actually makes sure that this uh, you know the buckets or whatever store backend that you actually exists. And so, for example, if I already save that and I rerun that command. We should see a warning telling us that um, that there is something wrong with that particular store, and we get the particular store. All right. So if we delete back that, and now we move on. Um, okay. So then we're gonna set what is called a after we set the expectation store. Uh, we give you optional instructions in case that you already have either a local existing project uh, expectations that you want to quote unquote migrate into this. Um, and then, or that you already have some existing expectations already in S3, this is how you would do it. Um, but then again, like this is something that, um, like we're assuming that this is a greenfield project, so therefore this should not be applicable, but we do, in this guide, we do offer that particular guide. All right, that particular instructions. Now, validation results. So eventually after we validate our data, right, like with expectations, we use the validator, and then the results are gonna be stored in a, in a, a in a validations result file, normally, again, it gets stored locally by default when you create the project. And then we're gonna go ahead, very similar to the configuration of the expectation store, we're gonna create the validation store in the very same section that we just added, the, is that we defined the expectation store. Now we're gonna define the validation store right here. Okay, and then same diff, it's very similar in terms of the data that you need. Uh, and then you're going to activate it the same way, right? Like we go here and then the validation store, we add it here. And it has the same options because it's using Boto, the same type of options in the sense of like you can pass uh, if you have a custom endpoint or a custom region name or whatever uh, options you want to pass to Boto for the connection or a, the treatment of AWS. Same thing. And again, if you already have uh, validation results that you want to bring into this project, you do it as well. Um, you can, we show you the instructions in this guide. Again, we're assuming this is a brand new field, uh, a green field project. So there should be nothing to do there. Uh, and then um, again, every time that you run the command uh, for 
the command for listing the sources, it will go through uh, the, the source, sorry, and then it will go through all of this, uh, whatever you have here as active, and it will make sure that they actually work and that they're actually correct. Okay, so then we move on to see the configure data docs. Uh, so in, in S3, right? Like, so data docs are sort of like the, the main way to visualize the UI to the, you know, like it's not just a JSON file with results or some, but we actually have it in a coherent, more visually friendly way of seeing the results of those validations and to show you what your data looks like and where things might not be working. Uh, and then this is what data docs are, right, in the project. And um, so normally it gets produced into your desktop. And if you're, you know, working on your own small project, that's fine. However, if, you know, you want to share it, let's say with your team or your company, whatever, like we recommend that you have it in a, in a general hosting place uh, where they can be updated. Um, and um, assuming that you don't have, a, you know, a, a bucket already, we show you instructions how to set up that bucket. And um, the important thing here, I would say to note is that the fact of that, since this will be a website, websites in general in S3 are publicly accessible um, buckets, and then you want to make sure that you lock it down at the very least how we're suggesting here, which is through a policy. And then you add whatever IPv4 or IPv6 that you happen to have, and then you lock it down that way. It can be many or it can be just one, but at least it gives you a, a little layer of security there. So that way people, the public, I guess the internet is not possibly potentially looking into your data docs, right? Okay, so um, once you have, well, you apply the policy and you know that a uh, bucket is created, in our case, we, we're gonna assume that you already have it created and it was given to you, you already know that. So we're gonna go to the doc site in our friend, um, Great Expectations YAML. And then under the data doc sites, this is the one that gets rendered by default by the scaffolding. And this is where we are going to use. Basically we copy and paste what was given to us in the S3, and then we come back and then we add it, uh, the demo, their docs, et cetera, right? Um, and then the way that we're gonna build the site and then that we just defined, and then we're gonna copy that command. Uh, if I can copy, uh, copy that command, and we're gonna run it. <clears throat> this, depending on if you already have expectations that you've already used that you've already run, this could take a little while. So it really depends how much you have there. Um, and then also for the sake of this demo, I'm just you don't need to, but I'm, I'm gonna copy this so that way we can then check out what happens. Right. So say yes. And then it's going to build the data docs. And then after the data docs are built, then you can also, um, you know, this is the part where we give a different options for your, um, for the data docs and the website that you want to add for the bucket. So that way you might uh, save some steps later on. So now it's the data, the data docs are built. And then if we were to go to that website that we just created, then we can see, um, like, you know, I've already created and run through but, uh, preparing for this demo, but this is, you know, like your data, uh, this is what you would see in your index site. These are all the validations that we've already done, et cetera. Anyway, so uh, back to, um, oops, no, back to here. Okay, so then after that, again, we give you the options if you want to skip the in index HTML. So basically this will work next time. It will automatically serve the index HTML. You can do that as well. And, you know, with that, all that having been said, we finally get to part two, which is like, I guess, the real fun part of this demo. Unfortunately, this will be for next month. But now that we have set up all the, you know, all the stores, all the underpinnings, this part should be a lot more fun because then we can actually focus on the how to validate the data, how to get the data, and then how to display that data in the, in the docs. All right, that's it. Thanks, Ruben. Way to... Uh... Leave everybody wanting more. Come for the for uh, the next meetup to see see the fun demo. Um, anyone who who showed up late, please feel free to watch the recording. We'll post that uh, later on in the week. Um, and, we, and we do have a couple of minutes. If anybody has any questions, we could probably just take like one. Uh, realistically, if if not now, feel free to jump in our Slack and uh, uh, ask there. All right, cool. Well, thanks so much for coming, everyone. Um, we'll see you next month. Thanks, Ruben. Thanks, uh, Pavel, Chathan, Susie. Thanks, everyone, for who presented. Uh, see you soon.
Later, everybody. Okay, Bye, thank you. See you soon.